we've got one hour drive to get to our destination this morning it's a rainy cloudy day and not expecting much solar coming into the off-grid garage today I'm expecting some rain and 15 16 degrees which we already have now well anyway welcome back to another episode here from the off-grid garage going in easterly directions this morning to pick up more gear for our project welcome back What the heck? 27 minutes for 14 kilometers. What is going on here? Holy crap, what a traffic. Yay, we are making 77 watts. Okay, so I need to explain there was an appointment before that I've got another business for computer repairs and computer services and everything so I was here in Brisbane to um, give someone a hand with setting up a new site and now we are going to have lunch first and charge up the car a little bit and then we go to the location to pick up the stuff for the off-grid garage well in the meanwhile we are charging with six seven hundred watts at home and we are at 26% again it's nice right the weather is still not the best but for my solar at home it's perfect it's free charging here in the shopping center there's not going enough juice in the box here to get home, but you know, um, while we have lunch, why not charging up here? And these circuit breakers have been delivered this morning. The parcel was at the front gate again, so I haven't opened it yet. We'll leave this for later, right? So I'm now on my way from Springfield Lakes to Ipswich to pick up more stuff for the off-grid garage. And we're charging with 950 watts. Cloudy day. But that's perfect for me. Got heaps of loot in the car now. Let's go home and check it out. It'll be an interesting weekend. Well, that is very exciting, guys. We've got now all the aluminium sheeting here for our battery rack. I also have asked them to make three shelves here for me with five millimeter aluminium. So I just want to see how this actually fits because I made them a little bit larger than the actual wooden floors are. <laughs> it fits. Oh, and they're not moving anymore. Nice. Yep, yeah, nice. 
and this is now five millimeter aluminium really yeah that is <laughs> and i've got three of them for the batteries and i'll leave the wooden floor in here for the compartment for all the switch gear and everything there's the dog hey kitty are you looking for the ponies hmm? a bitty yeah and these are all the other bits and pieces as per my measurements I hope they are all all right. I have measured a couple of times. It's hard to imagine how this all works here around the corners, you know. So let's see if this all works out. And we have to make the cutout here for the bus bars as well. But for now, let's have a look at our circuit breakers. I'm really keen to see them. Here they are, three times 100 and one 250. Wow, they are large. <laughs> I guess this is the trick position in the middle here. And then turn it all the way back up. And here with this little wheel, we can set the trip current from 100 amp, which is 1.0, all the way down to 80 amps, which I probably will do per pack. Yeah, and these are the EX9MD1-B. They have um, 250 volt DC per contact. So with two contacts, 500 volt DC and 25 kilo amps of uh, braking capacity. So just to give you an idea, these are the usual fuse holders. This is the normal size of a normal circuit breaker with DIN rail mount. And this is the 100 amp version of the circuit breaker. That is a difference, right? Wow. Well, I can tell you, I spent quite some time to think about how I mount them here in my shelf. Because usually they are made for switchboard compartments. So you're using these long screws going through there see they're sticking out a little bit and then you just mount them in like a switchboard compartment like like in, in here somewhere and then you have like a little door in your switchboard and then you can turn off and turn on your load but i want to do something different with these ones well i knew they are not coming with any any shrouds here for the for the contacts they come with these well it's like a like a rubber like a rubber um, separator. So this is only for pushing them in here. So they separate only your positive and your negative, but it doesn't cover your terminals. And you certainly don't want to have them on top of your shelf, something like this, you know. So I hope this works out. It looks good. I looked on many, many pictures online if this would be possible. And it seems like it could work. Well, they actually don't fit the dimensions I found on the internet. And I made my template of it. This is almost like half the size only. Well, that's even better. Look at these big breakers. Cool, hey? They fit easily in here. Easy. So both of these circuit breakers have an operation voltage of 250 volts one pole or 500 volts if you use both poles of the switch. And the rated current is 100 amp for the battery bank and 250 amp for all three battery banks together. I mean, this gives me a rated power of 12,500 watts for all three battery banks in parallel then. That should be all right. We then have different possibilities to set the trip current with these two dials or with one dial over here. So the smaller circuit breaker can be set between 1.0 and 0 0.8 times the nominal current. So 100 amp right now down to 80 amps. And the larger 250 amp circuit breaker can be set to 1.0 and 0 0.8 as well, which then means I can dial it down to 200 amps trip current. So in here on the larger circuit breaker, you can also see a second dial here. And this is for the short circuit instantaneous relay trip current setting which means in case of a short, we can set a lower trip current here with this dial, 
so the circuit breaker will trip earlier or later depending on your settings. So this is necessary if you have larger motors, for example, as, as your load, and they're pulling a lot of current when they start up. And the peak voltage for both circuit breakers is 8 kV they can withstand. And then, as previously mentioned, the braking capacity is 25 kA for both breakers. In the manual you can see if we take off the front cover, there is some room behind, behind these covers here where we can install all kinds of accessories for these switches. So we've got auxiliary switches, I'm not sure what AL is, looks like an auxiliary switch as well. We've got um, shunt trips, which can remotely trip your circuit breaker and turn off your system. I have ordered one of these auxiliary switches, but it is on back order, so this will come later. And we have to put this in here and then we will take off the cover and have a look what's underneath. And interestingly, they also come with a trip button here. So when we turn them off and on, and we press the trip button here, it goes in the trip position. I've never seen this before on circuit breakers. Oh! Jesus, this is loud. All right, next thought I want to share. M10 by 35 here on the bus bar I said yeah well you drill a 10 millimeter 10.5 millimeter hole and then have the M10 bolt through here through the copper bar and use these no I won't use M10 I probably go with M6 only because well if you have a look at these ones here next to each other M10 M8 M6 and which one has the larger contact area to the bus bar? Right, that's this one, right? M6, far more contact area for the ring lock. So why, why should I use M10 then? That gives me far less contact area to the bus bar. So I will go with the 6mm cables. And here, 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 I haven't shown you yet. Here, look at all these offcuts they gave me as well for free. This is all from cutting the aluminium sheeting. And they didn't want to keep the offcuts because I paid for them. So I bought three full sheets and these are all the offcuts. I'm super excited. It's always so handy to have such an aluminium plate. Amazing. Good stuff, eh? Well, a lot of people said the MDF is not the right shelf for carrying batteries. And one of you said if you glue two together to make them stronger, that'll be fine for now. But how does it look like in five years time? And this was the comment which triggered me to order these aluminium shelves now. This person is totally right. They look good for now. Who knows what happens in five years time, you know? There's humidity, there's more rain than expected or something. And then we've got the big disaster. The shelves are not easy to replace. You have to take off the whole battery then. You know, you've got all the bus bars connected. There's a mechanical connection between all the cells. And you don't want to mess around with that. So you have to disconnect all the battery cells and then take them out, replace the floor. Doing it right now, it, it's the correct way. Everything is as per regulations now. It's the better solution. Even it has cost me another few dollars. But that's just what it is, right? So this cutout now gives me enough space here around the bus around the bus bar situation. So it's a finger wide gap in between. And even if I move the shelf back and forward, there's always a finger, there's always 10 millimeters gap at least to the bus bar. So no need to do anything else here. And I also don't need these additional supports anymore. The two support system works well now for these aluminium shelves. So I have now mounted our first side panel here. So this will be the front and this is the right hand side which goes this way here in parallel to the 
electrical cabinet on this side there. And this is exactly the side where the main switch and the circuit breaker will sit. So they will go in like this from here through the panel. That'll be a bit of measurement and confirmation measurement and double check the measurement and triple check the measurement and then confirm everything and then do it a completely different way maybe. <laughs> It'll be a nightmare. So I think I have located <laughs> the, the rough location of the circuit breakers. So this is the, the bottom bank, the middle one and the top one, which will be future. And this is the main switch sitting over here. Here, here, here. That's how it will look like. Okay, all my marks looking good. I measured four times at least, so hopefully it will fit. Hopefully it will fit. <laughs> if not, I will not show it in the video. Okay, let's drill some holes. Okay, guys, I think we are slowly wrapping up this video now here. I've got um, these two cutouts ready and I need to do another two which will probably take another hour, one and a half hours. It's a lot of jigsawing and filing, a lot of filing. Thankfully it's aluminium and it's not too bad and the file actually has a good bite on this uh, three millimeter aluminium sheet here. Jeez, there's shit everywhere here. Well, that's just what Andy's garage looks like. Well, that's why we are in the garage, right? We can do a little bit of mess and just leave it as it is. Tomorrow we have to go to the hardware store. We have to uh, buy some essential stuff for the circuit breakers. Well, probably in tomorrow's video, I will talk a bit about the changes here, which are coming to our electrical cabinet. Yeah, there's not just the battery 2.0 happening here in the off-grid garage. All right, guys, I would say that's all for yesterday and today. Can't believe how much work this still is. I just started and I thought, my God, I'm already, I'm working here for hours and hours and hours and it's not getting anywhere. There's so much to do. Thankfully, I've got some help here. Thank you so much for all your beer donations. It definitely keeps me going in these times. <laughs> all right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. Stay charged and safe. And we will see us again. We will see us again tomorrow morning in the next video when we go to the hardware store and pick up more essential stuff and some other goodies. All right, until then, you have a good night's sleep and thanks for watching again. See you then, bye-bye.